be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the living light who transformed darkness into light. Through the blessings of this glorious Sunday, make us worthy to praise you with all those who saw the radiant light of your resurrection. We worship and thank you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. raise glory, honor, and praise to the living one who by his death gave life to his creation. By his resurrection he saved his church, gave joy to his flock, brought us back to his Father, and enriched us with the gifts of his Spirit. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Only begotten Son, you were born of the Father before all ages, and by your creative will you separated light from darkness on the first, this, the first day of the week. You fashioned all creation to honor Adam, the image of your majesty. We praise and thank you and celebrate proclaiming Blessed are you, for you have appeared in the flesh on earth like us, and you lived among us. Blessed are you, for you were buried and counted among the dead, and you shined your light in the sadness of the tomb. Blessed are you, for you rose to life, giving hope, good hope to all, and you filled the angels with radiance, and they appeared at your tomb like flashes of lightning. Now, o Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to make us worthy to rejoice in the glory of your radiant resurrection. Breathe life into our departed and make them worthy to stand at your right hand in your eternal life that you are prepared for those who love you. With them we praise and thank you for your graces and glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit now and forever.
and of our prayers, and may we become a sweet fragrance through our good works and our actions. Hear our petitions and grant rest to our departed in your dwelling place of joy. O Lord our God, to you be glory now and forever. with joy from the mountain Sunday is a feast so great offer praise to the Lord God and with angels celebrate Bless be God who has exalted Sunday far above all days let the priest read the gospel A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him you are also being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Praise be to God always.
For the proclamation of the gospel of our Saviour, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, and Jesus came to Jericho, and he intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief publican and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and he climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass by that way. And when he reached the place, Jesus looked up, and he said to him, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for this day I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly, and he received him with great joy. And when they saw all of this, they began to grumble, saying, he has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there, and he said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, O Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, this day salvation has come to this house because this man also is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. This is the truth, peace be with you. And he sought to, seek Je to see Jesus, who he was, and he could not because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This section of the Gospels, chapters one, uh, verses one through 10 in St. Luke, are unique to St. Luke. No one else tells this story, only St. Luke. And it's a charming story, but one of a profound importance of conversion. So Zechariah is the chief of all the tax collectors in town or in the region. And as an aside, he puts down, St. Luke writes, he was very wealthy. Needless to say, from his extortion, working for an occupying force, which is the Roman Empire. So what is here is more than just curiosity. This is a man of prominence, they know him. He has a reputation. So this idea of trying to see our Lord, that could be curiosity, but he goes beyond that. His desire is to see, and in seeing, he has contact, and in contact, he converts. This is very much of a, of a we can say, a symbolism, 
and of an image of the conversion of the soul, that God will require of us to seek him. His grace, of course, is already calling us. We're only responding to that initial grace. But what Zacchaeus does in this instance is already, he puts his reputation online. This is a man who is prominent, even if he's regarded by a sinner by the faithful Jews. But he also is a man of prominence in the town who's going to climb up this tree, which is a rather strange thing to do. But he's so intent in seeing our Lord, this short man, that the only way he can do this is to climb the tree. So not only is our Lord in the crowd moving by, he runs ahead to make sure he can intersect the pathway. And remember, our Lord is not coming to be in Jericho. He's just passing through town. So he's not going to be here for any longer than the moment it takes him to pass through the city. And so when Zechariah climbs up into the tree to see our Lord, he must have been utterly stunned when our Lord stops and not only notices the man in the tree, which is probably not too surprising, but calls him out by name. You come down now quickly, because I'm going to stay at your house tonight. Notice we're told by St. Luke in the first place that our Lord's intention was only to pass through the town. And here we're told, he tells Zechai, you come down now because I'm staying actually tonight with you. It's a magnificent moment where we see this continual reciprocity between God and the soul. God calling this wealthy sinner and the, the motivation then of the intention by grace, Zakai's desire now to see this rabbi to coming through town. And then all of a sudden to have our Lord in this reciprocity to say, I stay with you tonight. And then of course the reaction of all the people around. This man is a public sinner. This man is a public criminal. You know, we have on the news day after day about all the concerns about trying to get the interpreters out of Afghanistan because these people served and helped for years. We owe it to them. Here you have this aspect in which our Lord is calling. And the reason why you have to get these interpreters out is because they're going to be killed. Because they are collaborators with a foreign occupying force, us. The same thing here in this aspect in which we wind up seeing this same kind of hatred would be the hatred for Zakai. He is a collaborator, he is working with an occupying force, and he takes our money. Taking the money is not necessarily the worst thing they see. What they see the worst part is being is this collaboration with the occupying pagan force. So Zakai is not somebody, he may be wealthy and he may be prominent in town, but he is not beloved by the Jews. And so that this rabbi should stop and say, you come down, I'm staying with you tonight. In this reciprocity, it's quite beautiful to see this imagery of this contact with our Lord, this desire first to see and to come in contact with our Lord and our Lord's reciprocating that, I remain with you. And then, of course, when you have this grumbling in the crowd, Zacchaeus doesn't even dress it directly. He just says, Lord, of everything I have, half of it, I give to the poor. This I tell all of you now. So that's already quite monumental. But then he goes on and he says, and if I've defrauded anyone, which is inevitable, if I've defrauded anyone, I will pay back to them fourfold. Now this is more than even the law of Moses is requiring. And the law of Moses, if you defrauded or extorted or somehow stolen, you had to repay back double to make reparation and then also the punitive aspect of it. So when he stands there and he says, if I have defrauded anyone, I will pay back fourfold, he's also letting these faithful Jews know, I know the law and I'm going to go even beyond that. This is what we call, the fancy word, is superrogative works. Things that are necessary, things that we do beyond, super, beyond what is just necessary. So it's one thing to make reparation. We restore what we stole. That is minimally required. And then the law of Moses and the punitive aspect, there's a punishment to it, is you'll pay back actually twofold. So when he says fourfold, he's indicating to this crowd, I know the law of Moses, I have violated it through my life. 
But I now make restitution and make reparation even beyond what is just simply necessary. So it's a magnificent episode that only St. Luke in his portrayal of this gentleness of our Lord records for us. Otherwise, we don't have this story. And this notion of the reciprocity and contact is when we talk about, as we were considering last week with the scriptures, the epistle being read, and the fet gomo, and the recognition of excellence. So when we come to the gospel, the gospel is central to this whole first part of the mass. Remembering the mass is divided into two sections. You have what is now called the liturgy of the word and the liturgy of the Eucharist, or what used to be called the mass, of the, the mass of the catechumens and the mass of the faithful. The liturgy of the catechumens is simply because of those who could be present at the liturgy who are preparing for their baptisms. And throughout the early centuries, preparing for your baptism would take two or three years because you were not only taught, but more importantly, you were initiated in how to live as a Catholic, the fasting, the manner of praying. But since these people were not baptized, if you remember we talked about in the beginning, the coming together is the very action sacramentally at the beginning of the liturgy is the very assembly of the body of Christ in its membership. And therefore those who were not baptized were never inside the church. They were not present with inside the building because they were not members of Christ. So they did not assemble with those. They'd be in that back vestibule. They could be at the first part. They could hear the lessons. They could hear the readings of the scriptures. They could hear the teachings. But at the end of the creed was the end of that liturgy of the word or the mass of the catechumens. And the rest was only those, the liturgy of the Eucharist, only those assembled within the church who were actually of good standing. Because that liturgy of the catechumens, the first half, was also for those who could come but who could not assemble within the church because they were making public reparation for their sins. And the three biggies were always murder, adultery, and apostasy. And in making reparation for those, we have records of making reparation for adultery was a 10-year public penance. So for the next 10 years, that individual was not receiving communion. They were not in the church. They, could, they had to come to church, but not into the assembly itself. They'd be also be in the back. And so when people would come in, the catechumens and the public sinners, those making reparation, they would greet each other, they know each other, they'd say hello, but they can't assemble in the church. And the idea was always to remember to pray for us. And then at the end of the creed, the doors would be closed, they'd leave. And then that was the two sections of the liturgy. And remember, it's about contact. And so those people, because of whatever obstacles, one, they're simply not baptized, or two, they have committed public and grievous offenses, they are not yet ready to be in the mass of the faithful. And because of this first section, we talked about the scriptures. When we come to the gospel, it's about contact. The scripture reading, we talked about excellence. We talked about the fet gomo, the, the versicle after the epistle. But when it comes to the gospel, the gospel in the church's understanding is that sacramental presence of Christ. It is treated differently. They're both sacred scriptures. They are both inspired word of God. But you'll notice that the gospels are treated differently because here we have the voice of Christ himself. Zachai, come down quickly because today I'm staying at your place. That kind of word is the reason why there's a procession of the gospel. Now in the early centuries of the church, the persecutions usually began with confiscating all the books. The books were all handwritten. They all had to be hand copied. And so the books would always be kept personally in safekeeping. And when the church assembled together, remember in the beginning, it wasn't even legal for you to have a building. Sometimes they were allowed to have them by toleration. But you'd oftentimes assemble at people's homes. And the clergy would come with those sacred books. So they became part of the procession of the assembly to wherever the liturgy was going to be offered. 
With that understanding, it is also the procession of our Lord in the presence of his people. And so in the early parts, as we talked before about the Syriac tradition of having curtains across the sanctuary, which would be opened when the scriptures were being read because it's a revelation of divinity. So we have throughout the centuries in which at the beginning of the liturgy, the gospel would be placed on a tripod, a stand at the front of the bema. So the notion being that between the Holy of Holies and the assembly of all the members of Christ, Christ in the book of books was present upon that tripod. And that is where the gospel would be read. In some of the rites of the church, the gospel would actually be processed further out, sometimes taken straight down the middle of the aisle and the proclamation was made in the very midst of the assembly. Sometimes it was taken off to what was liturgically north, making the proclamation towards that world of darkness, the, dark, the north, therefore indicating to bring the light of redemption to those who have not yet heard the gospel. All the symbolism is the same about Christ being present as he is in this book of books. Now, a few weeks ago, I mentioned to you, pay attention in the liturgy the number of times where you have shlom kul chun, peace be to you, peace be with you. Because that is the greeting of our Lord in his resurrection. So you have it at the very beginning of the liturgy of the word. In a sense, the kingdom begins to become unfolded by those who assemble within the body of Christ. And as we've said many times, it is impossible to be Catholic without being at Mass. It's not a spiritual club that we belong to. Without assembling in the body of Christ, it is simply impossible to live the Catholic life. So why the church has always sought to assemble, even in persecutions, even if in small groups in basements, Whatever it is, they absolutely have to assemble. And in the beginning of that liturgy, we have peace be to you. That same greeting of the resurrection at the very beginning of the mass. And then you'll notice that the gospel is brought in procession. There are normally two candles. And we get so used to seeing, last night I was by myself, we get so used to seeing the priest by himself is that's completely abnormal. Normally there are two acolytes, there's a subdeacon, there's a deacon, and there's a crossbearer. And there are two to be torchbearers in front of the altar during the anaphora. You saw that perhaps at Epiphany. So there's supposed to be seven other people up here with me. But that procession is to bring the book of books to its place. And you notice that what it is, is our contrition before our Lord. We bow before the gospel and we ask for his mercy and we offer incense, which in the Syriac tradition, the incense always has twofold meaning, remember. One, it has obviously the imagery of prayer, veneration, but it also has the imagery of our contrition, the husoyo, so that when we bow before the book of books, before this, and incense the scriptures, we're doing this because we are penitent in recognizing to us not to be properly disposed is not the word, that we have an unworthiness to us to hear that voice of God, Christ himself. And so we ask to have compassion and mercy, the insensation of the scriptures themselves, and then shlom kuluchun, peace be with you. The same Christ in his resurrection greets us again at this point before we hear audibly the words of the sacred scriptures. It is a magnificent to understand the sacramental unfolding of the kingdom in the gospel. And with that aspect, when the gospel is done, which we do not do with the epistle, there is a blessing before the epistle, but it is for the reader and for the people, but it's not the scriptures themselves. But at the end of the gospel, the gospels themselves are raised up and they become the blessing for all people. And again in our response as we have the praise of the Alleluia, Hallelujah, following the epistle. So here we have is what's called the Korozuto. Korozuto. Achrez is to proclaim in Syria. Korozuto, Korozuto is the proclamation. We announce at the end of the gospel our response to that scriptures. 
And so the same way that before the scriptures begin, we make that penitential aspect and our Lord says to us, peace be with you, his resurrection to present himself on that day of glory. We make the sign of the cross before we listen to the gospel because we ask for our ears of our spirit to be open to hear this voice. And at the end of it, Christ himself blesses us in this book of books and we proclaim in the Koro Zuto this response. The deacon will sing the Koro Zuto. Historically, they have varied depending upon the theme of the liturgy. You have those who have been here during the weeks, you see the Koro Zuto change, whether it's a mass of martyrs or confessors or whatever it may be, this would vary. Throughout the Sundays of after Pentecost, all the Sundays are resurrection. This is the day the Lord has made. So this versicle, this koro zuto of the words that are given to us, this proclamation, they are all part of this response of contact. So it's like zakhai. We get in the car on the way to the divine liturgy. We discuss where's brunch, who's buying the donuts, who's doing this, what are we doing this afternoon? That type of a thing. And then we arrive at our assembly, it becomes a different thing to respond. So we are like Zechai, talking about donuts, driving to mass, but we know that we come to see our Lord. We climb that tree. Sometimes it's un inconvenient. It's always inconvenient to climb a tree, if you ask me. Even when I was a kid, I didn't climb trees. But that whole aspect of going to see our Lord and he responds to us, this in the liturgy of the word is the gospel. And our Lord in the end of the gospel with the blessing that is given to us and we bow and we make the sign of the cross before the book of books, before this gospel of mercy and compassion. This blessing that is given to us is that reciprocated response from our Lord. Zechariah, you come down quickly. Get out of that tree. You look like an idiot. Tonight I'm staying at your house. That is exactly. And then that response to the gospel blessing us, the beautiful words that our Lord says. Because I have come to seek and to find and to heal that which was lost. That is what we reciprocate back and forth, this desire to see our Lord, to have contact to our Lord, to hear the words, peace be with you. I manifest to my, myself to you in resurrection and I have come to find that which was lost and to heal you, the members. And this day, salvation comes to this house. This is a magnificent aspect to understand the glory of the liturgy, the magnificent of what's taking place as the kingdom is unfolded and we look to our Lord to seek us out because we wander all too often in our lives so that we may be found and be healed so that we no longer be what is lost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
ולבות מרדם הגלוהו, ולבות הלוכו דרך הליטיון, ואיננם סוגות עיבותו, כי עולל בית תוך וסקודם, חייק לוד קודשו. Accepting the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the blessed mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the chosen one, our holy father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Shmuni and her sons. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Almighty 
Father, your true and holy love, may we be bound by your divine love and find joy in it all the days of our lives. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss, that through Jesus Christ our Lord we may be your radiant and blameless flock. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith which is pleasing. before you and ask that you grant us in your mercy the riches of your grace and kindness. May your compassion and assistance sustain us all the days of our lives through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Father, you sent your only Son to save us, for we are weak and poor. When we had gone astray, he brought us back to your spiritual fold by his royal blood. Through your grace, love, and favor of your only Son, we implore you to accept this bloodless sacrifice from our sinful hands, and through it to forgive our sins. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. His right and just. Truly glory, thanks, praise, and honor are yours, O God, the Father, maker of all creation, with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit, the angels, archangels, and all the heavenly hosts bless and praise you. They cry out and they proclaim. Hashad ilema ben chaye, 
انصابل لحم من قولی شانتا و بار خوب قادش وقصویا بلتل میدا کار و مار سابق کل مهنه کل خون خون و دنی تا فخر و دیل دخلو فای کن و خلو ساگیم می تقصی و می تیهم خسویم خامه و خوی در قلم علمین آمین خوقن و الکس و دمسک و من حمر و من مهیو بارخ و قادش و یابل تلمی دا کار و مار سابش دا و مهنه کل خون خون و دنی تا دما و دیلا دیاتی کی خدا تو دخل و فای کن و خل و ساگیه می تیشر و می تیهم خسون خام و خاید قلم علمی آمین Whenever you observe these commandments you proclaim my death and resurrection until I come again Jesus Christ, you remember your plan of salvation for us, your conception, birth, and baptism, your saving passion, and life-giving death, your burial, your glorious resurrection, and ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your royal second coming when you will judge all people and reward them according to their deeds. Now we ask you, at that fearful hour, have compassion on us and have mercy upon us in your kindness. Forgive our sins in your mercy. For this, your church implores you, and through you and with you, implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. As we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you, and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us and hear us. Now, awesome is this moment, O oh my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit to send and rest upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand in reverence as we pray. Annin Mario, Annin Mario, Annin Mario, Nite Moro Rocho Chayu Kodisho, Unachen Alainu Arkoibono Honu. May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the pardon of faults, the honor of beauty and strengthening of your holy church and the protection of her children from all sin. 
And may these holy mysteries allow us to stand with confidence before your awesome throne, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Exalt your holy church established throughout the world. Protect your shepherds of the true faith in peace and security all the days of their lives, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishar of Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops, pious priests, pure deacons, and all who serve your holy altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, all those who call upon your holy name. Bless those who are near and bring back those who are far. Visit the sick and strengthen the weak. Release captives and assist the oppressed. Bring back those who have strayed, that they may live in your fear, and reward those who have brought offerings to your holy church. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders and all the children of your holy church. Grant them security and peace, and keep domestic and foreign conflicts far from them, so that they may live in tranquility. Protect them by the sign of your living and victorious cross. Rescue the persecuted and the displaced of your flock, and be a refuge for strangers and a companion to travelers. Grant your eternal reward to monks, to those who live solitary lives, and to hermits who live on mountaintops and in caves of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, upon this altar and upon your heavenly altar, the holy and ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, confessors, and evangelists, John the Baptist, the forerunner, Stephen the archdeacon and first martyr, Saint Joseph, Saint Jude, Saint Shmuni and her seven sons, and all the saints. May we join their ranks and share in their joyful feast. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, the faithful teachers who have gone to their rest in the true faith, especially Peter and Paul, Mark, Clement, Ignatius, Dionysius, Julius, and all those who endured suffering and persecution for the strengthening of your holy church. Remember also those who serve your holy altar and forgive their sins, that they may reach your joyful dwellings. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who have left this world and have gone to you. Lead them to your joyful dwellings and blot out all their sins. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever.
O Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offers yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you, you be glory forever. O God the Father, you are merciful and you are compassionate. You have sanctified this divine service and have perfected it in your good pleasure by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us now, that we may be renewed as your spiritual children, so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls, we may call upon you, O glorious Father and lover of all people, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are the Lord's, now, Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation of soul and body, and crush our enemy, the evil one. Grant us your mercy through Christ Jesus, our Lord, for you are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of it, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, look upon us, your inheritance, who bow before you, and guide our steps on your right path. Make us worthy to share in this sacrifice, and may it sanctify the souls and bodies of those who receive it through Christ Jesus our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask Him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for He is one in heaven and on earth, to Him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by Your holy life, and our souls purified by Your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Again and again, we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, O compassionate and merciful one, O lover of all people, have mercy on us. God the Father, how can we who are unworthy thank you for your grace? For you have given us this divine gift and have made us worthy to share in the body and blood of your only begotten Son who saved us. Through him and with him glory and honor are due to you and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, you are worshipped and you are holy. Bless and forgive the priests who are the stewards of your people and of your holy church. Forgive the servers of your divine mysteries and all the faithful who have shared in this sacrifice. Care for orphans, help widows, assist the poor and the distressed. Satisfy the hungry and protect all who call upon your holy name in every place. May your name be glorified with that of your Father and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. Amen. So just a reminder that this Friday, the Feast of the Transfiguration, will be the third of our parish barbecues. 
And I don't see any forecast of hurricanes this week, so we may not catch the tail end. So whether rain or shine, we will be here. We use the parish hall or outside in the tents. Keep praying for good weather. So please, it'd be a great joy to see you all at this end of the summer now, barbecue. But please remember to contact the phone number that is on the flyer so we have an idea of numbers of people who are coming. Come all, and may it be a great evening of joy all together. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen.